So that's the story that you saw in the news. That's the story that you've read in the newspaper. Do you really know what the inside story is? Here's a North Star Oasis exclusive because we actually, well, a longtime friend of the program and one of our viewers uh, was there. And he was, well, I'll let him tell you the story. Let's take a look. Let's see. The state capitol for the rally for uh, the, the March for Trump event at the capitol um, inside the capitol at the rotunda, and about uh, well, about 20 30 minutes into it, they um, there's some smoke out in the uh, hallway between the uh, um, between the rotunda and the stairs going to the west, and it was, apparently it's a smoke bomb, but I didn't know much about that. I seen it out there, didn't hear a lot of panic. I just kind of stayed inside and watched the program. And then at some point, some young lady, probably about five foot nothing, young, about probably 20 years old, comes running by. She got hit in the nose, was crying, um, startled and upset and everything. And her boyfriend was kind of bringing her with her, you know, bringing them, you know, inside the protection of the rotunda. At that point, um, I dropped off my uh, my bikers for Trump sign with one of the ladies that I already knew. And uh, she held on to that for me. I went out and into the hallway to see uh, um, if there's any brave people that wanted to meet me. And uh, ended up uh, standing next to the cop, uh, one of the uh, capital security guards. And we ended up, uh, we're at the bottom of the stairs that go up to the House chambers, I believe it is, or the Senate chambers. Um, and uh, it was just a lot of chanting back and forth. Uh, from the, uh, from the protesters and kind of chants from the rally goers. And I was basically standing between um, the rally people behind me and I was facing the chanters, the, the protesters on the stairs. And it was uh, pretty much just chanting back and forth, uh, pretty loud. And there's usually one or two cops next to me. Um, I, stayed, I stood my ground at the right side of the staircase as uh, one of the cops was in the middle. and. Another guy was kind of in and out and had to, had to deal with other stuff going on. Um, the protesters are kind of milling around and, and doing the trying to intimidate people, and we weren't going to be intimidated. So a bunch of us went out there, a lot of the bikers and some veterans and some others, as well as myself, uh, went out there to greet them. And at some point, I don't know if it was a decision the protesters made or a decision that was from the Capitol Security Guard security officer, but they ended up, the protesters for the most part went up on the staircase, and so I was at the bottom, I was on the floor, you know, just inches away from the bottom step, and I just faced off with uh, the protesters that are, you know, trying to yell through me, past me, around me, everything, and I'm basically, there's a few of us, there's a security officer next to me, and we're just trying to keep the separation between the protesters and the rally goers behind me. And it stayed that way for probably half hour to 45 minutes. It's hard to judge time in that situation.
Okay, did you notice what he just did? If you see the bald-headed guy, uh, I will identify his first name as Kelly, uh, a longtime friend of mine. I've known him for what, about 11 years. Uh, the guy behind him, he was pro-Trump. Kelly is pro-Trump. But Kelly knew that the guy was going to be instigating something, even on his own side, just by the middle finger gesture, throwing a few Effenheimers out. And what did Kelly do? Slapped his hand down and gave him a reprimand. And there's another guy who is um, in camouflage, army uniform, desert cam camouflage, uh, with the rank of sergeant. And those are really the, probably the two biggest ruffians on the pro-Trump side. Uh, but Kelly came in trying to be a peacemaker between the two. And he and I did talk off camera that, you know, there's a certain expectation of you don't want to give your opponents the extra ammunition. And you notice here that he was trying to play peacemaker. Let's continue to the, watch the video. And right there, you see the guy still continuing to yell. Uh, he did not listen to what Kelly had to say, and he continued on and instigating. But these things happen when you get tension. And what you're going to notice here in a little bit, I'm going to point out uh, briefly, is watch the rising tensions from both sides because you're going to have the anti-Trump protesters are going to spin up their chance to a higher volume, but then the pro-Trump uh, supporters are going to come out and they're going to also amp it up and that is when the clash happens. At some point, you'll see the crowd start coming down. And what I try to do was, um, you know, stance, you know, stance my feet and try to push back against the people on the bottom row. Oh, yeah. 
So I had my hands apart with two different bodies holding them back and trying to keep them on the stairs. At some point, someone reached around and squirted mace or squirted some kind of pepper spray, some kind of chemical irritant straight into my right eye. still pushing and I grabbed, um, I grabbed someone's leg and pushed them back and they fell down the stairs. Well, they, 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 jumped, they dropped, I mean, they didn't fall hard because, uh, it, you know, there's people there, but they, I, I pushed them back. He went down and tried to spin around and man, eventually got back up the stairs. <laughs> Usually I've been tased and that, you know, you, you feel crappy for a couple seconds and then, you know, once they release, you, you get your stuff back together. The, the, the chemical irritant, the pepper spray, that stayed in my eye for the rest of the day. able to see probably in about, I'm going to say about an hour. It's, uh, again, it's hard to judge time, but uh, I was trying to wash my eye out, but it was, uh, it was sprayed directly into my eye. Uh, it was basically just a right side of my face had, had the spray. What I have been hearing is they're collecting evidence, and at first they said that the five of them who were charged with felony level rioting or mayhem or whatever the charge is in Minnesota, at first the county attorney had dropped that down to a lower level rioting, but from what I'm hearing um, from the state, I, I talked to a state patrol sergeant this afternoon um, and gave my over the phone statement of what happened in, in what I was able to, you know, what I was a part of what, what I witnessed. Because I'm told because it was done in a state building, the state capitol, um, that might prompt those charges to go back up to felony level. Now they could only hold people for 48 to 72 hours and they have to let them go if they don't have charges. They're still building the charges and I'm just hoping that the charges and all the evidence is just pouring in because there's a ton of videos that we've all seen on the, on. YouTube and whatever else. I'm cautiously optimistic that the state patrol and the capital security and whoever's involved is going to try to uh, do due diligence and get this right and build a strong case that is going to withhold even the Ramsey County style jurors that we expect to end up with. I'm glad it was me that was that got the maze and not someone else. I'm glad that we were able to, me and a lot of veterans and bikers 
and other people that were not veterans and bikers. I'm glad that we were able to keep the people, keep those rioters, those protesters, those whatever the hell they call themselves, um, keep them out of the rotunda, which we did. The people in the rotunda continued their program. Um, for the most part, I interrupted. Um, so, and, and they were safe. And I would, you know, I would absolutely do it again. I just, uh, that's just the way I'm, I'm wired. So there is more of an inside the operation, um, in, inside the event uh, look that you probably won't get anywhere else. And so I want to say that I'm deeply uh, indebted to my friend Kelly for giving us the interview and telling us the uh, story. And as you probably noticed that his story, it, it goes exactly with the way that you saw the events in the video. So uh, find it you know, a very, very accurate account from one participant's perspective. Um, 